of the webinar is to provide parents and pupils with a better insight into the life of the Pony School, opportunities we provide for our children and for our community, what we think about education and the wonderful opportunity we enjoy here in Kenya. Before thinking about this introduction, I asked a couple of pupils what they would say if they were to speak to you today, and their answers were interesting. The first, clearly trying to please, entered into the expected list of opportunities teaching and learning that she had enjoyed so far in the school. The second, less eager to please and slightly more cynical, changed the direction of the conversation. He said that he would focus less on the opportunities offered by Paponi and would place emphasis on the more human aspects of the school. He said, and I'll quote, school is about friends, families, and how I can use what I've learned in my world beyond school. As I would say to those of you who will visit us in the future, senior school has to be about the transition from child to adult. It's about opportunities, good teaching and quality learning, but it is most importantly about the transition, that development into that young person who has the necessary qualities to move on to their universities with the confidence, not just to do well academically, but to contribute to a wider, different and ultimately more independent society. The foundations laid by their time in their prep schools needs to be built on. Children need to move on, develop their independence, begin to make their own decisions and take responsibility for them. Academics are vital and they are important, but they don't define a school. In my experience, schools rarely differ in the quality of their teaching and learning. And when they do, it can vary across academic disciplines. Good teaching and a good environment for learning is what any school should boast. But what defines a really good school is what extra does it provide? What attitude does it encourage? And what character does it value? The Pony School, like other schools, offers excellent teaching. But what it prides itself on, in my view, is the quality of its pupils. Our aim is not just to encourage independence, but for our pupils to understand that with their independence, they are part of a community and a society where they're going to have to work together with others to create a world that encourages everybody. Yes, we want our pupils to go on to become doctors, lawyers, engineers, musicians, etc. But more importantly, we want them to go on and become top lawyers, excellent doctors and brilliant musicians, and always with the compassion to give more broadly to their society. I'm going to leave my colleagues here today to say more about the workings of the school. These are the people that will be close to your children and be the backbone of their experience here. First of all, I'm going to hand over to Sylvia Mary, who is our Director of Teaching and Learning. It is Sylvia's role to oversee the provision of what we offer in the classroom and ensure, and ensure that our teaching is outstanding. She is supported by the Director of Studies, whose role it is to monitor how the children are coping, praise successes and support those more challenged. Sylvia. Thank you, Mark. Good morning. The academic life at Peponi School is guided by two key principles. One, educating pupils to gain, to gain a brief of understanding. And two, to think as independently and as incisively as possible. In these ways, we push to achieve the best possible results examination uh, in every examination for each and every pupil. Last year, our examination results were no exception. At A level, we had a pass rate A star to B of 85%. At ICCSE level, A star to C 
99%. This is achieved by having small class sizes and a dedicated staff. The average class sizes in our school at IGCSE level is at 20, at A level is at 16. We have a flexible academic program where pupils get to choose from an array of subjects and that they would like to pursue from year 10 to A level. A timetable is then built around the people's choices. Our curriculum goals aim to support all the pupils to realize their full potential academically, pastorally, and socially. The dynamic learning support department offers specialized programs for both the gifted and talented and those with specific uh, learning needs. We have a unique pastoral program where all members of staff are assigned a tutor group. This ensures a more collaborative environment where both teachers and pupils will interact freely and this enhances the vibrancy and the camaraderie. Our careers department follows a structured progressive program from year nine all the way to A level building knowledge, skills, and attributes towards employability. It is with this in mind that we have uh, cultivated or have children who have enhanced their character. The culture of our children is such that we aim to develop the whole people within a caring community. Our pupils are friendly, curious, inclusive, hardworking and adventurous. Although we emphasize on academics, we also expect our pupils to enjoy life outside of the classroom. Life after Peponi. For Peponi, we believe that imagination is a source of great learning. And adventure is actively nourished in its encouragement of all its pupils. Pupils are prepared for life after Peponi by ensuring that they get the skills that they will require to survive in the outside world. Our pupils go on to join universities from all over the world. Most notably in the UK, we have pupils joining universities such as Cambridge, Bristol, Imperial, among others. They also go to the USA where they also join uh, universities such as Yale, Williams College, in Canada, they will join universities such as UBC, the University of Toronto, among other universities around the world, in Australia and also here in Kenya. They join a myriad of courses such as law, economics, science, medicine, and engineering. And they also join more elaborate courses such as music technology and other therapeutic courses. Hadi Opeoni to the utmost is what we strive for. Excellence, not only in class, but outside, and indeed in life after the corner. Thank you. Sylvia, thank you very much. As I implied in my introduction, academics are important, but they leave, but they have to be supported by a rich and rewarding extracurricular program that plays an equally important part in the Paponi experience. Carl Cook is our new director of both boarding and of extracurricular activities and both these areas are directly linked to what truly defines the Pony School. Carl, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, everyone. Boarding school life here at Paponi School is an experience that is simply second to none. Uh, we are most proud of our house and boarding provision. As we know, all communities operate far more comfortably and productively and successfully when there is that homely and family presence at its core, and Paponi School is no exception. Pupils here work, rest and play uh, whilst receiving exceptional pastoral care through a blend of kindness, tradition, flexibility and commitment of staff. All four houses here at Paponi, Charla, Magadi, Elementaita and Jipe, offer full boarding and weekly boarding as well as a day pupil option to all age groups. All boarding pupils have their own room and all four houses are within easy walking distance on this magnificent site of the school's classrooms and facilities. All meals are taken in our dining hall and on weekday evenings, a supervised prep session always takes place. In each house, which is carefully nurtured by a resident housemaster or housemistress, who then is overseeing each individual pupil's welfare. 
together with their own families, the resident tutors, the medical staff present in each house, this pastoral team develops each boy and girl to excel in all areas of school life whilst looking after each other as well as themselves. It's integral to our all-round education. Pupils then remain in the house for their schooling. As a result, lasting friendships and positions of responsibilities and experiences of new and wide ranging activities are just three of the opportunities waiting for the boarding pupil outside the classroom. With Northlands Ranch on our doorstep, the weekends can truly be an adventure window for our boarders. Our newly completed chapel ensures there's an opportunity for worship and reflection. Our own sporting facilities are open both after school during the week and throughout the weekend and in these COVID times are responsibly supervised and sanitised by the staff daily. Relaxation can occur in our boarding house common rooms or in our outdoor rotunda, coupled with perhaps a barbecue or a quiz night on our lawns, maybe beside the tuck shop or simply chilling in their own bedroom, their home from home. And through our inter-house competitions, ranging from debating to dance, from rugby to rounders, loyalty to one's house occurs and a sense of spirit and inclusivity resonates. Consequently, the house can often be the environment in which a pupil feels they have the best chance to unlock a potential away from the classroom. In essence, boarding at Paponi provides that caring family backdrop to your son or daughter's education that you've been looking for. This pastoral structure allows regular parent contact if necessary, ensuring that the development of your child is truly a, a partnership. Paponi provides a number of bus routes facilitating weekly boarding, allowing access from all areas of Nairobi. And as a school, we are within easy reach of the International Airport, where we always ensure that transfers are safely provided. Ultimately, then, these are not boarding houses, they are boarding homes. And crucially, they help to make each individual pupil feel special, something we all like to feel every now and again. And our academic excellence, as we've heard from Sylvia, is matched by an extraordinary range of extracurricular activities. As mentioned, integral to the all round education on offer here are opportunities provided for a child to shine away from that classroom. Our activity programme expands horizons and does one's self-esteem no harm at all as it equips the pupils with life essential skills. We have specialist blocks for music, for art and drama, as well as a wealth of sporting facilities and opportunities. And for explanation of our sporting provision, I would like to introduce Mr. Mark Anthony Eisler, our Director of Sport. Mark. Thank you, Carl. Sport at Pony School is significant and compulsory. We have a long-standing reputation for sport that is founded on a tradition of fierce competition and we achieve success across all age groups and sports. Paponi is renowned as being one of the strongest sporting schools in Kenya, but our ethos is equally focused on inclusion and participation, with 100% of pupils regularly taking part in sporting and physical activities on a weekly basis in the form of two games afternoons per year, as well as morning and after school training sessions. We also have over 85% of these pupils competing in regular inter-school sporting fixtures. Most pupils will spend on average about six to 10 hours a week playing sport. As is typical with an all-round school like Paponi, we do boast our fair share of elite level athletes who have represented their country in the Commonwealth Games and World Cup tournaments in sports such as cricket, squash, swimming, and golf. However, sport at Paponi is emphatically for all, and we seek to inspire every pupil from the novice to the elite, placing an emphasis on enjoyment in the sport, pride in the school, and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. We offer a range of sports and activities to engage our pupils and give them the best chance to find their potential and show off their true talents. In addition to the major British sports, we offer swimming, athletics, cross country, rugby sevens, tennis, squash, basketball, golf and volleyball. We are lucky enough to have an elite team of eight professional sports coaches, most of whom have represented Kenya at international level themselves, played for teams abroad and all hold internationally recognized coaching qualifications. These coaches run extra sessions in the form of one-to-one -one masterclasses and are actively involved in our sports scholarship testing day. To reward and challenge our pupils and teams, we do run sports tours with an annual hockey tour to South Africa 
and a cricket tour to the UK every two years. Basketball and football are next in line for their sports tours. As you will have hopefully seen from the video, our facilities are outstanding and constantly being developed. As you drive through the school gates, you are greeted by a well-manicured cricket field with one of the best grass wickets in the country and a 400 meter running track providing the border for a full-size rugby field. On a Sunday, you will find both these facilities packed with professional Kenyan international rugby and cricket athletes. Our tennis courts are also used every morning by the East African Tennis Federation. Paponi School also boasts three full-size hockey pitches, two football pitches, three netball courts, a newly refurbished all-weather tennis and basketball court, two volleyball courts, a six-lane 25-meter swimming pool, fully equipped fitness center, and two high-quality glass-back squash courts. Sport is not just about physical excellence, though. It develops the whole person, instills confidence, and teaches lessons that you will not learn in a classroom. In that sense, then, sport at Paponi School is both inspirational and transformative. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Anthony. Other activities which take place on a daily basis, as just under an hour a day here at Paponi is devoted to an activity program. And some of these operate two or three times a week. All pupils choose at least one activity. Our musicians have the opportunity to join choirs, orchestra, ensembles, or rock bands under the guidance of our director of music. Pupils can complete ARSM grades, and we have a number of those who have progressed through to grade eight. But as is important, participation is key. And in COVID permitting, we would host, we would like to host regular concerts to which parents are most welcome, as well as our inter-house competitions. There are scholarships available for on entry for the most able and academic music is offered as a subject. Similarly, there are entry scholarships for art and drama, and both can be taken as an academic subject as well as operating twice a week in this art activity programme. In art and photography, a variety of mediums and textiles are taught in the presence of a year group exhibitions and inter-house competitions ensures that no war is without a pupil-led work of art around the school. Drama both inside the studio and outside, is spectacular. Pupils are encouraged to devise and perform as individuals or as part of their year group or house. Paponi's impressive involvement in the East African MUN, Model United Nations, as well as our phenomenal take up from each year group for the President's Award at Bronze, Silver and Gold, they all have their roots in the activity programme that we offer, be it through the Year Nine's early experience of the World Scholars Conference, or our much loved weekend pest and orienteering trips, or our charity and community work. These are all activities that are encouraged from day one at Paponi. Just off campus, and under the guidance of our outdoor pursuit specialists, we have an excellent relationship with Northlands Ranch, as referred to earlier, which means all pupils have a chance to experience a wealth of activities from shooting to kayaking, from cycling to assault courses. What is rather nice is that the less anticipated activities also prove popular. On a weekly basis, chess and board games, calligraphy, cookery, coding, young enterprise, they all foster the interaction we enjoy between members of our community. They provide some of the most enjoyable parts of, of the day um, in, our, in our lives here, and many thrived in our virtual first half of term, which I think speaks volumes for the programme. Underpinning this is our Paponi School Award. It's a one or two year long award, which essentially combines the academic prerogative with the extracurricular. The diploma, the char charter or testament are awards, dependable on your age group, which involves every pupil. Boys and girls have the chance to earn honor points to their award for both independent academic pursuits and their participation and commitment to the extracurricular. Prizes at speech day are awarded, championing the pupils' commitments to their all-round education. And perhaps this award, more than anything else, shows how the extracurricular here does not compete with, but complements one's academic pursuits. Thank you. Carl, thank you very much. And I hope that's given you a flavour um, and some information about what we are trying to achieve here at the school. The following short video link is designed to sh show how the school is coping and managing in these times of COVID. However, it does also give a pictorial view of the school while it's functioning. Whilst you're watching, do please send any questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. 
and thank you very much to those of you who've already submitted them. We will try to answer them shortly after the video. Thank you. The pandemic of COVID-19 is affecting communities and schools across Kenya and the rest of the world. In Kenya, the government has closed its schools until January 2021, but has allowed the resumption of teaching for those children in transitionary and examination years. We at Paponi School, as a British curriculum school, have been allowed to have year groups back who are either in transition between courses or are sitting examinations at the end of this academic year. Whilst we are continuing with online learning for some children who have rightfully chosen not to return to school, there is no doubt that those in school are enjoying and benefiting from the experience. Education is always best done in person and the character of this school works best when we are together as a community. What do you enjoy most about being back at school? For me, it's the community, the way we have come together to protect each other and those at home that we have to go back to it at the end of each day. The Poponi spirit has truly shown itself. Being able to come back to school with everyone wearing masks, having sanitizing stations as well as hand washing stations has been very reassuring for me to come back. It's also been very helpful for everyone to be socially distanced, whether it's in the break area, the dining hall or classrooms. In the classrooms, the teachers are taking appropriate measures to ensure our safety and their own. And in addition to this, in the boarding houses, each pupil has their own room, which means that there is a sense of security and safety even within the boarding house where there is regular cleaning and upkeep. I have been very impressed with the way that our parents, pupils and teachers took to online learning back in March when it was generally felt that we would be back fully at the beginning of the academic year. Sadly, that was not to be the case and although we were doing well academically, there is no question that we were falling behind in some important areas. Children need children when they are learning, teachers need children when they are teaching and parents need schools to provide the community from which their children learn. Plato, the Greek philosopher, said that necessity is the mother of invention and the necessary isolation at the beginning of the spread of this pandemic caused a necessity. And out of that, we needed the invention of technological educational techniques and devices that were possibly unknown or certainly unpracticed before our lockdown. Many of these practices will stay and become incorporated into better learning experiences for everybody. However, None of them have replaced teaching in person and I am pleased to say that with the correct policies and protocols in place we have been able to return to school and to a more active approach to learning inside and outside the classroom. Members of the school have responded to the new challenges well. Masks are worn, hands have never been so clean and we remain a healthy two metres apart. It is interesting when I watch the news coming out of the United States, in some places in the United Kingdom and throughout areas of Europe, the debate about three very simple precautions that can be taken to prevent the transmission of the virus from person to person seems to wage on. Remain socially distant, wear a mask and sanitise your hands by preferably using soap and water are regular and much accepted practices in Kenya and Paponi. Children here have taken to these principles really well and are not only tolerating these slight impositions but also encouraging and supporting each other to do the right thing. I read once in an email that a criticism of the British curriculum was that it was solely and purely constructed for examination success and focused on grades to the detriment of the actual real purposes of education. I think that this is unfair and the adaptability of our pupils to intelligently and constructively adapt to this new world is testament to the success of their education. The Pony School remains committed to the development of character regardless of the academic ability and cherishes qualities in individuals regardless of current and popular enthusiasms. 
As you will see in this video, activities have started and whilst we are avoiding collective and socially close activities, we are encouraging all pupils to find and be involved in something outside the classroom. In many children's cases, this has been a very valued part of their return to school. Music, drama, some sports and debating have all been enjoyed. We are fortunate in having a very large campus with plenty of space for all of our exciting activities. Enjoy the video. It is really good to have our children back. Thank you very much. I hope that's given you a, a more visual um, insight into the school and what we offer here. Um, we've now got, we have got a number of questions that have come through. Um, so as a panel, we will try to answer them. Um, but what I would say is if there are, your questions aren't answered, then please come and visit us so that we can actually talk and you can understand better what we provide and how we help our children more directly here. How big is your learning support unit? And how do you support those with learning needs? So good. Right, our learning support uh, faculty is a very strong faculty. Um, I think that's one of the things we overlook. Sometimes we feel like learning support is something that should not be addressed. And as parents, we do not like to do that. But let me tell you, this is one of the best things that you can do for your child. And learning needs are very, they vary. They vary from those pupils who are gifted and talented to those who have very simple learning disabilities, for example, dyslexia. So all those are catered within our faculty, with a learning support faculty, which we have a name for here. We call it a train faculty. And pupils are given the support they need. They're given uh, individualized attention. They sit with the teachers. Some of them, if need be, and that is really individual based, each child is treated according to their needs and they will be tested and their support needs identified and they will be given the requisite help that they will need. Which school do you play against in sporting fixtures? Um, we are part of the CASO group of schools and there are around 25 different schools within that particular group. So 
from a Monday to Friday, we tend to have individual fixtures against those schools. Some of them include Hillcrest, Brookhouse schools, the Brayburn schools, um, and up towards St. Andrews, Turi, and Greensteads. But uh, we also do, on a, uh, during midweek, play against some of the local schools, uh, like Thika Boys High, for example, they do come in and, and play our fixtures. Um, and then on weekends, it tends to be mainly tournament-based. So we'll have either 13 or 14 different schools here at Paponi where we host the tournament, or we'll go away to another school where, again, there'll be about 12, 13, 14 different schools. So on average, we'll probably, pay, pro probably play around 25 of those different schools uh, over the course of the term. How successful are you in tournaments? Sport is a big focus for our family. I think in our trophy cabinet, we have at one stage had every queso tournament shield for every sport that has been offered and that we take part in. Uh, new sports, for example, squash last year was the first time we, um, we, we took part in a queso squash tournament up at St Andrews, which we, which we won. Um, we are most dominant in sports like hockey, particularly senior boys hockey um, and cricket. Uh, but basketball, we are now becoming uh, a formidable uh, opposition. And as I said, at some point, we've had those trophies in our cabinet across all of our different uh, major and minor sports over the course of the year. What support is there if in-house if a child is lonely or having trouble settling in? Uh, yeah, no, that's a, a good question. We have um, the beauty of the pastoral care that we have here is that we've got a number of units where uh, a child can feel uh, very much included in a, in a group. Um, it might be a one-to-one -one tutor that we talked about earlier. Uh, it might be possibly the, um, the, the, the tutor group that extend, extends into the year group, within the house group. There are a number of units that are overseen by our pastoral staff. We have sisters in, um, in, in the boarding houses and in the day houses who are also aware and alert to any child that might feel slightly lost or perhaps you know slightly unsure of themselves uh, and we have a number of um, we have a number of uh, senior house staff who also oversee that pastoral care um, it means that actually from the first moment that they come into the school until the, uh, their, their, their last year they are always believe that they have their opportunity to approach a member of staff as a as much as a friend as it is a professional you are one of the few schools with pupils all on site. How have you managed COVID safely? I think, um, as you saw in the video, I think the um, uh, the initial reaction to COVID was to follow government and international guidelines, remain distant or socially distant, sanitise regularly and often, and um, to wear a mask when possible. Um, and I think it's more than just simply saying follow those rules um it's actually then building up an understanding in the, in the pupil body and amongst the um, those who teach the pupils that this actually is really simple to do and they themselves begin to understand why and what they're trying to achieve to remain safe i think covid is a concern to everybody pupils parents staff um and following the simple regulations seems at the moment to be holding back we're very fortunate in having a huge campus. Um, so, and fortunately also with the weather in that we can um, do much of our work outside. And again, that, um, that, that advice being given from a number of international bodies um, suggests that um, we have a very low risk here at the Pony. When does the next academic year begin in view of disruptions to school calendars by COVID-19? I think we're following government guidelines at the moment. And at the moment, the Minister for Education has instructed that all schools be back from January 4th. However, our calendar states that we, or we start our calendar on the 11th of January, so we will have our usual Christmas break of four weeks and we resume back in January on the 11th. Can I just add uh, a small amount of that? Um, fortunately, um, the academic programme um, has not really halted from March onwards, um, we've been very fortunate with the technical advances and with the support of our parents, that so all of our pupils, as far as classroom um, work goes, has been relatively undisturbed. Um, clearly, the social and the more important aspects of school um, have been, um, but hopefully, as far as classes are concerned, we hope to continue um, at, with the regular pattern of the school year. 
does the pony facilitate equestrian sport for kids who are currently involved in the same? Yes, I mean, as we do have literally just uh, on, on our doorstep, the ranch, there is an equestrian uh, opportunity within the, the sporting program, which we currently have in place. This means that pupils of all age groups have an opportunity to not just the horse riding, uh, which is which is literally, as I say, on the, uh, the, the other side of the fence, but also the cycling and the uh, shooting that the ranch offers. All of these are uh, integrated into a games program or games and activity program, which we have running on every day um, of the week for, for various age groups. And of course, we, um, we, we love to encourage the individual pursuit of a particular sport or of a particular activity. Um, if the child is growing and developing and, uh, and enjoying success, we would love to encourage that as often as possible. So we do feel very fortunate that we can uh, support children who have such individual uh, loves and pursuits uh, and, and are beginning to really succeed. We, we, uh, we're delighted to support them. Do you have boarders in every year group and what proportion of the school board? Yeah, we do have boarding from year nine, we call Shell, all the way through to the upper six. Um, currently, uh, it's been a little bit of an uncertain uh, year, obviously, uh, but we currently have just under 50% who uh, have will board at one stage or the other this term. Uh, the weekly boarding option has proved uh, relatively popular during this term, and there are 80 to 90 uh, regular weekly boarders. Uh, the full boarders, slightly lower than we've had maybe in the past, they uh, they are um, uh, here for the sort of the 25 or 30 or so who have come in, have been, um, have been very lucky to enjoy the interaction with those weekly boarders as well. So the community has been re-established here. Uh, and it's one that we wish to, to grow, grow and grow. What is the application process? Um, the initial process starts with um, an email, an intention um, to come and look at the school um, to the registrar. Um, and then the registrar will take you through the process of filling in the appropriate forms. Um, we do use common entrance um, for those children at prep schools that offer common entrance. And we do have an assessment um, at some point during the year, it's not always a fixed date because clearly um, children change their mind when, they, when they're coming to school and they may yeah. always come here at a different time. Um, so um, we have assessment examinations um, so, um, throughout the year. Which universities do your pupils typically attend? Right. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have an interest in universities all over the world. Uh, typically, in the past, it has been uh, from the people wanting to go to the UK, but now has, that has not changed, and many people now look at universities all over the world, really. We have a strong interest in the UK. We have, and we can find ourselves in this each year, we have entrance into uh, Cambridge University, Bristol, Imperial. Away from the UK and the US, we have people going to Williams College, Yale University and others. We also have pupils going to Australia, Canada, and other universities. As a Ugandan parent, I would like to visit my child sometimes. Can I do this any weekend or are there set weekends? No, the answer to that is really quite straightforward. We, we welcome uh, visits from, from parents and family um, uh, with COVID protocol in place um, uh, on whatever weekends might be convenient. Uh, we do have a number of um, Ugandan full boarders who um, are contribute wonderfully to our um, to our extracurricular and boarding provision, as well as the, the school itself and the, the academic pursuits. And uh, for a parent to be able to come over and uh, visit their child, we would we would embrace. Um, and it's uh, it's certainly something that we would like all parents to know that that is the case. Are there any opportunities for Sunday chapel? Uh, do you want to go? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, there are. Um, there is a, um, all, board, all four boarders go um, to a church. Um, at the moment, they're going to churches outside of the school. Um, while we will continue to encourage children to attend their own um, particular faith um, outside the school, be part of the community, a faith community outside the school. From January onwards, we will have a um, our own chapel and there will be regular 
um, services held not just on Sunday, but throughout the week. Does the school provide a second child discount? It's being reviewed at the moment. Um, uh, the answer today is no, but from September, there may be a change and I'll, I'll then be better answered um, from September onwards. What time does the school start for day pupils? The school structure of the day is we all start with an eight o'clock tutor session where pupils come in and go to their different tutor groups. We have a very unique uh, tutoring system where every tutor is a tutor, so pupils go to their tutor rooms. We start at eight and the last lesson ends at 3.55. Buses leave every day at 4.15. If you're a day pupil, the rest go on to continue with your boarding activities uh, in their houses. For children not doing common entrance, can a people get pre-accepted into the coding based on mock results? Oh, um, at IGCC, yes, so coming into our sixth form, um, we do use mock results, and in fact, we insist on seeing for those who are following the British curriculum, and we know we have done mocks at some point in their school, we will insist on seeing those mock results. The 13th plus entry, um, we would use mock results if, for example, there is no, um, there's something's gone wrong, there's been an injury or um, something, that they can't sit the common entrance examination, we would then use mocks. What we do base much more um, our assessment procedure is the report from the prep school. Do you offer scholarships at 13 plus and at 15 plus like other schools? Um, the answer is clearly yes, we do both at 13 plus and 16 plus in a wide range. Carl has already um, explained our extracurricular type scholarship, drama, art, music, etc. Um, and there is a, um, an academic award for both age ranges. Why do you offer A-levels and not the IB programme? I think we could all contribute to that. Um, um, uh, A-levels are, um, as far as we're concerned, they are a good um, and well-tested examination system and well re resourced um, across all subject disciplines. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of both IB and A-level um, serve the same purpose. They're both academic, rigorous qualifications I'm not confident that one is better than the other. Um, if you're following an IB course, you will be getting, you'll be being taught the same skills in the same way. Um, IB's claim that it's broader and less, um, less specific and more general, I'm not sure is only the case. And I think that um, can be um, a misguided feature of the IB system. Um, a level, I think its rigor and its acceptance um, as an entry qualification to all universities across the world. Um, for us, um, it stands, um, it's, it stood its test of time and we're committed to it. Please highlight one or two volunteer or outreach activities you are involved in at a school. Um, Carl's relatively new. Yeah, um, um, we've not been able to, in this particular term, and this has been one of my, my first term, I've not been able to uh, sadly see that in action at the moment, but certainly I've inherited, I know, a community and charity program, which I'm sure Mark can uh, I, touch I, upon. Yeah, I, I, um, thank you. I, I, I think it's one of our, our real strengths here. Um, uh, there, there is a genuine belief, I think, amongst a number of um, our parents, supportive parents, that um, our children can exist in a bubble um, and one that uh, can occur in all countries. Um, I think what's important for all our children to learn is they're part of a wider community. Um, we're not just the Pony School, we're the Pony School in Kenya, and we should be looking and teaching our children that Kenya has huge um, to A things to offer, but also it has a lot to give. We have a lot to give in our charity program, not just raising money, I think that's the easy side, um, but actually our children working in communities and understanding their own um, world, I think is really important. Um, so there are vast numbers of opportunities um, in the school, and all children are encouraged to be part of it. How do you monitor a child's progress, and how is the communication with parents? Regular email? Yes, regular email, yes. In addition to that, we have a very comprehensive reporting system where we report after every three or four weeks. We 
call that collection. So for example, in Newcomer's camp, this camp, the parent will receive four different reports for their people. In between the reporting calendar, we have meetings with tutors and with teachers. That gives us a very good idea of how the people is doing. It keeps the communication channels open and we do encourage parents to reach out whenever they have concerns and whenever they feel they want to uh, know more about their child and their progress in school. So we monitor progress closely. Is the entry into Kifuni based only on academics and how does that affect a student who has learning difficulties? Um, it, it certainly has no effect on entry um, for students with learning difficulties. That's why we have a fairly a really well integrated um, crane department, as Sylvia explained. Um, so no, not at all. Um, entry to Kifuni School um, varies. We pride ourselves in being broad, diverse, um, and providing a wide range of children the opportunities to study here. Um, I, I think it's, it's one of our strengths. How do you get pupils to the school? Um, uh, in terms of um, transport, transport um, there is a, a bus service for day pupils um, that are picked up in various locations um, around Nairobi. Um, clearly, those are coming in for boarding. Um, if there are international students coming into the airport, the airport is 40 minutes away, and we provide transport from there to here. Um, and weekly boarding, there are more, a, a wider range of buses taking up weekly borders to slightly more distant um, locations across Nairobi. Are your facilities and the boarding houses sanitized every day? Yes, they are indeed, uh, and more than just once a day. We have um, we've made in this in this current term we've made it uh, uh, absolutely clear that as soon as the pupils leave the boarding house uh, at um, quarter to eight in the morning, once they've had their breakfast, uh, and the day pupils have arrived, the boarding houses are closed for cleaning purposes and cleaning purposes exclusively. Uh, pupils do not return um, until the uh, until the lunchtime um, slot. Uh, and once again in the afternoon, they are cleaned uh, every room, every common room, uh, in order to um, in order to keep the the the, uh, the environment as we would wish. Um, I can also say that it extends to our classrooms and to our sporting facilities and to our various other extracurricular activities. Uh, the team have been um, uh, the team have been busy to say the least uh, in terms of ensuring that we are in a safe environment. What is your proximity to the airport? Um, uh, by transport, it does depend on the time of day. For those of you who know Nairobi, um, traffic is not our greatest asset, um, but on a good run, it's um, half an hour, 40 minutes. Um, and generally, with the timing of flights coming in and out of um, the city, we tend to make it certainly within the hour. Okay, I think um, that, um, thank you very much for those questions. Um, again, I hope they um, helped you um, and answered what you need. Um, there is one more question I think that's just come in. Thank you. How do you deal with cases of ill discipline? Are there many? No, generally, I, and I can, I'm actually, um, it's the last question I, um, I can um, say, but I know generally um, discipline here is very good. And that comes from a number of sources. One, our parents' expectations um, and the culture within the, pa the parent body and what parents are doing at home. Um, if there are instances of indiscipline, then they're dealt with fairly firmly. Um, it's not expected either in the school and it's treated in that way. Um, not harshly, not overly um, uh, rigorous in the sense we're not a military academy, we're a school. Um, and when children misbehave, it's often something that they, something that's happening within their um, life. So support, guidance, care, um, if it continues, then our systems are in place to appropriately um, correct those children. Have you had any cases of COVID within the staff or pupils since the opening of the school? We've had two pupils um, very early on, actually, with it in the school term. Um, we will organize a bubble system. So the pupils all in that bubble were then tested immediately. And I think what was it were, what was really good to see in testament to the procedures we're following 
is that every student tested around the, the children that um, tested positive um, were negative. Um, so that's the only um, two cases of as far as pupils are concerned, and one member of our security staff um, was tested positive. Um, and again, the bubble system all around were tested, and, and fortunately, I can now report um, today that all people were tested negative. Thank you very much for um, those questions. I'd like to conclude by first of all thanking very much um, the technical team um, here um, who supported this and to the presenters that um, have, I hope, answered and addressed um, and given a flavour of what the Pony School has to offer. What it can't replace, however, is a genuine visit. So please write to the registrar. The contact addresses are provided and we will send to you um, with the contacts we now have for you. Um, and please arrange to come and visit. But thank you very much for coming. I hope it's been useful um, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you very much.